Hey everyone, welcome back to Adobe Live. I am here with Stephanie Bruckler. Hi. Welcome back, day two. Day two of Yay. three. So we're gonna jump into her work very soon, but if you are new to Adobe Live, uh, we are covering editorial design this week. So specifically, Stephanie's working on a zine. Mm -hmm. um, it could have anything to do with page layout, print design, posters, all kinds of stuff. Oh, we have so many friends in the chat. There's Annie, Walter, Ryan, Renata. Hello, everyone. Hi. Super good to have you here. Thanks for checking us out. And like I said, if you are new to Adobe Live, I'll just go over quickly what we'll be covering in about 30 minutes. We're gonna do a giveaway. We also have a challenge for you, but the schedule for this week is we had Rachel streaming right before with Javier, and then we have Stephanie right now. And then next from one, uh, we have Lucas Albrecht and Michael Jarrett. So lots of awesome designers, lots of awesome hosts to bring you good creative content. And if editorial design maybe isn't your thing, stick around, learn some stuff, and next week we will have a different theme. We're here pretty much every Tuesday through Thursday. Uh, like I mentioned, we will be doing a giveaway, a chat and win in about 30 minutes. So you have the opportunity to win an awesome Adobe Live sticker. Super cool. I think that everyone in the Adobe Live team has one of these stickers somewhere on their electronic devices, and also some Tatly uh, Adobe temporary tattoos. So I think this is like the nerdiest and most amazing thing <laughs> ever. So cool. So you could win both of those in about 30 minutes. We will let you know uh, when that's happening. And as you probably know, we will be doing a challenge today. So yesterday we were challenging you to make editorial designs alongside our designers like Stephanie. Uh, yesterday it was recipe cards and today it is doo -doo -doo -doo, making a 90s zine of some sort. So you can see it's kind of like stream inception right now. Um, <laughs> let me actually pause this because it's freaking me out. <laughs> so if you go to the challenge tab in the chat pod, you can check out the info. We're inviting you to create and share a two plus page 90s themed photography zine. If you don't know what a zine is, it's kind of like a a uh, rough and tumble mini magazine. How would you describe it? You're making it's one. It's like, I would say it's like a shorter form of a magazine and it's more loose. It, mm -hmm. it doesn't need to have chapters. It doesn't need yeah. to have like uh, page numbers. It's like less formal mm -hmm. and more playful. Yeah, super playful, it's often making some sort of statement. Uh, so we have a template for you if you want to use it. Use InDesign to create it and then you can use this stock gallery that we've provided for you to find photography images if my internet loads, there we go. So you don't have to buy the images, you can just click on one and save a preview to your computer. You don't have to license it, just save a preview and you can use that in your zines. So you have until 12.30 Pacific time to get that turned in and the winner will get their work featured and a free year of Creative Cloud. Okay, it's enough of me talking. <laughs> Jeez, let's talk about you. Who are you? Um, hi, um, I'm Stephanie. I'm a designer. I work primarily in branding and also um, a lot of editorial design. Mm. Um, it spans like pretty far, like from creating logos and identities for companies to making packaging, um, designing exhibitions, designing books and magazines, and also websites. So it's pretty diverse. <laughs> yeah, you are quite diverse. And we can see some of your work behind us. Um, and I have your Behance open, so if you want to check Stephanie out on Behance, it's behance.net slash Stephanie Bruckler, but mm. <laughs> it is B-R-U-E-C-K-L-E-R. -E and you can also just check the info tab in the chat pod. You can click her little face, it'll take you right there. Awesome, so everyone knows who you are. Now maybe we can check out what you worked on yesterday so we can get up to speed. Yeah, so just to fill everybody in who mm. hasn't um, tuned in yesterday, I'm designing a 16-page scene this week, um, about tabloid size. I'm thinking about having it printed in like newsprint, like really like thin paper. Yeah. Um, it's, the name is Dead Plants. I was inspired by the transformation and the wilting of um, cut flowers and plants mm -hmm. and um, I always find it like really interesting how something beautiful can turn into something that's ugly, but then again is beautiful. Like yeah. it creates like very interesting shapes. Totally. So um, I can show you what we did yesterday. Um, so we started laying out the zine. Ooh, um, I love it. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> we started creating 
um, the cover um, and um, designed a logo for this. So we have this like uh, type interlocking at, with the illustration. So if you zoom in, um, we worked in um, having the illustration overlap in the front and also going in the back, so really wrapping, wrapping all the letters. Yeah, especially that T. That's so nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we started with the first and the second spread, where we kind of followed the same idea. Um, I'm not done with the second spread yet, so I feel like this is where we're going to continue today. Right. Cool. And yeah. you also chose the color palette yesterday mm -hmm. from some inspiration. Yes. I love seeing that mood board. Oh, I can show you. Yeah, then. let's see it. Um, it's here. So nice. I was thinking of working with like a very fresh, colorful palette. Yeah, it's yeah. so. I actually didn't think about this yesterday, but that juxtaposition between like dead plants, but this very fresh and bright color palette. Yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> and during your stream yesterday, we talked a lot about your experience. In the industry, in chat, you asked a lot of questions like, uh, how do you work with coworkers that maybe you don't get along with in the creative space or um, working on pro bono projects, that kind of stuff. So if you have more questions, Stephanie's here until one. <laughs> I was like, what time is it? Yeah. Until one. So we have it for about two hours. So please feel free to ask your questions. Yeah, I'm happy to answer anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> totally. Um, cool. cool. So um, I'll just jump back into InDesign mm -hmm. and I'm continuing with um, page uh, spread two. So um, just to um, fill you in again, like the first two spreads, I was thinking of just having this big um, typographic quote and just overlaying it with the white um, drawings mm -hmm. and plant drawings I have. So I already started laying out the text here. But um, let me see, is this, is this that layer? Yeah. Illustrations locked. Wait, <laughs> Good, are they good. on the type layer? <laughs> Whoopsies. Got to get your layers right, yeah. your arrangement down pat. OK. I think they were on a type. Yeah. OK. Going to put them back. So. Okay. OK. This is weird. <laughs> What's it's happening? It's not doing what I wanted to. You can't wait. Seems like everything is locked. Okay, yeah, so now. Okay, putting the okay. illustrations on the layer. Good. Um, so I was uh, thinking of like moving these around a little bit. And scaling them. So I, I thought that it would be nice if I turned this one maybe around, scale it oh, up cool. a little bit. Mm -hmm. That would fit nicely into that yeah, little in that space. Little corner. Ooh, I like that. Maybe making it a bit bigger. And then I'm just going to continue the same spiel as yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, I can explain again what I'm doing, how I'm wrapping the illustration around the type. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Scaling this one up a little bit, just get it a bit more prominent. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do next is um, I have the illustrations right now in a layer behind the type. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this and then go into this uh, top layer here called illustration top for images. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to paste it in place. Um, so. Now I have the illustration in the front. And since I want to have both illustration in the back of the type and the front of the type, I'm going to start choosing some areas where I feel like, oh, it could nicely overlap. So maybe I'll just start in that corner. Um, and what I'm doing is instead of moving the image around, I'm just resizing the box. Mm -hmm. So it stays in place. And I'm just like highlighting certain areas. Right, that's a super interesting thing about InDesign is when you do place an image, you have the actual image and it's usually outlined in like brown, then you have kind of the frame that it sits within, which is usually green. So you can move things around, crop them, mask them almost. Yeah, so here you can see I have like parts of the illustration that's not overlapping right. the type. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to continue doing this uh, for some of the other areas where it overlaps with the type. 
So I might just do this down here again. And you're making new copies. Yeah. So I'm just them. like copy pasting, um, I like pasting in place, mm -hmm. and then so I could take this, copy it, and paste it in place. <clears throat> then you just got your own little yeah. copy of it. Perfect. What's up, Leanne? Welcome to the stream. Ooh, Ryan, that is a great question. It does He's wondering, do you have a dream publication that you would want to work for or a dream client? Um, that is a really good question. <laughs> tough question. <laughs> it's really tough. I feel like um, it's always a dream to work for clients that have a specific um, goal for society in mind, like something that is doing good or that is... Um, trying to protect people's rights, like mm -hmm. things like that. So I feel like that would be a really big dream just to work on something that is really close to my heart. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and chat, we're gonna turn that question around to you. Do you have a dream publication? Or if editorial design isn't your bag, that's totally fine, but what's your dream client? Let us know what you do and your dream client. Because we could have some some chefs in the audience and they'd like to work for a specific restaurant, <laughs> who knows? Let us know. Yeah. I love hearing what you all do in chat. You are such a wide and varied uh, array of friends. I like to know. Massimiliano says, <laughs> looks very nice, like the colors. As um, Anel is saying, she wants to work for Adobe. Oh, nice. <laughs> cool, Anel, what would you want to do? What's your thing? Are you an engineer, designer, marketer? Ooh, Daniel says I'm working for a dream client right now. Can you tell us, Daniel? Or is it NDA? We talked about that yesterday, too. Mm. Uh, Ryan says, I used to want to work for a magazine, but I was informed that it's not as glamorous as it might appear. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like magazines always have really tight deadlines. Yes. Um, and then oftentimes the information that you have to work with, like, either the copy, the images, and all that is coming from different sources because you have editors, you have photographers that you work with, mm -hmm. so it's a lot of uh, things at once that trickle in, yeah. and um, tidelines are always really uh, rough, like yeah. really, really tight, so. Stressful. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, let's see, da Daniel says his dream client is ICCF. And I'm wondering, is that the Inner City Christian Federation? That's all that I'm seeing online. Let me know. Oh. <laughs> Are you whispering to me? I'm just reading it. Oh, okay. <laughs> International Conservation Caucus Foundation. Okay, so not the one that I said. Cool, very nice. <clears throat> yeah, I can imagine that working for a magazine. I just think of like, the movie The Devil Wears Prada. <laughs> and that's like specifically fashion, so yeah. that could be even crazier. Yeah, I feel yeah. like fashion is pretty insane. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, Mohammed, how are you sending the drawings back in front of the type letters? So while you're working, I think mm -hmm. I can I can teach you Mohammed because Stephanie taught me yesterday. Yeah. So you have a, an illustration, your flower illustration on the very back layer behind everything. And then you copy it and you paste it on top of everything and basically use kind of like a clipping mask to uh, choose very small areas where you want it to be on top or behind. And you can see um, Stephanie doing this. Yeah. Live. Um, like on this side, you can see my layers. So I have several layers set up. The most bottom one is the blue background color. The second one is the background illustration, so the illustration that is behind the type. Mm -hmm. And then I have a type layer, and a f on top of that, I have this layer where I'm adding um, these additional, like, front wrap uh, of the illustration. There you go. It makes sense if you're, you're watching, you do it. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> hard to just explain with yeah. words. Totally. What's up, Margarita? Glad to have you. Jason is back from lunch. Jason, that was a quick lunch. You were just here for Rachel's stream. <laughs> Wonder what you ate. What did you have for lunch? This is right before lunchtime, so yesterday we were getting very hungry. Oh, yeah, we were end. looking at recipe cards. Mm-hmm, getting inspired. 
What did you end up having for lunch? I had a chicken sandwich. Ooh, from Adobe Cafe? Yeah. Wow, what did you rate it? How did you feel? It was good. Yeah? Yeah. Just classic chicken sandwich. Yeah. There you go, they have sushi sometimes. That's Ooh, what I got. Nice. It's <laughs> Uh, Garen dreams of working for BLT, creating key art for our favorite feature films. Very cool. I like that too, Garen, like storyboarding or doing visual exploration for films, animated films, that'd be awesome. Jason had enchiladas for lunch. Ooh, yummy. Yeah. Did you make them, Jason? Did you buy them? Tell me everything about your <laughs> life. Margarita says, I had a mango, just one mango? All right, Margarita, you gotta have a snack later, though. It's not enough. <clears throat> uh, Daniel says you can see the work that he's done for that uh, company on his Behance. Awesome. So, nice. chat, I don't know if you knew this, but if you're looking in the chat pod and you click on Daniel's icon, it'll take you straight to his Behance uh, portfolio. Very cool. I also saw that there's now the work in progress feature. Oh, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. Where you can just uh, share like snapshots of what you're working on and right. I think it disappears after 24 hours. Yeah, it's kind of like stories. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Very cool. It reminds me of Instagram mixed with Dribble, kind of. Like Dribble's often works in progress, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Oh, Jason says the client brought them in. The client's paying for your lunch, Jason? Living the life. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good question, Leanne. She's wondering, what are your three top typefaces you like to work with? You said you liked Futura yesterday. Oh yeah, I like Futura a lot. Mm -hmm. um, then I like, what else do I like? I like, um, there is this one typeface um, on Typekit called Kepler. Mm. Um, it's a serif. I use it for my website. Um, I like it a lot. It's, it's classic, but it has a bit more contrast in it than Garamond, for example, mm -hmm. does. Um, and third, let me think. I kind of like uh, Freud. Oh. Like it's also, I think it's mm -hmm. also in Typekit. Um, yeah. I like it a lot. I, I use it on some of my web projects. It's uh, very elegant and yeah. Right, so you mean like F-R-E-U-D? Uh, F-R-E-I-J-H-T. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Totally thinking of a different one. So chat, I'll show you. This is Kepler. On Typekit. If you don't know what Typekit is, super awesome way to grab typefaces if you have a CC subscription and just sync them straight to your Creative Cloud account so that they will just be available in Photoshop or wherever you'd like to use them. Got web fonts, all the other kinds of fonts. <laughs> and if you didn't know, um, let's see, we just released a couple fonts for Hidden Treasures. So some Bauhaus fonts. They basically found super old Bauhaus posters and works in progress that had never been finished and a bunch of students created full typefaces out of them. So now we have these two and you can get them for free. Just search Adobe Hidden Treasures. I think that's the website, Adobe Hidden Treasures. Get those fonts, try them out. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, they're pretty new. Yeah. I'm trying to use them in a project right now. How oh, nice. I'm gonna try them out too. Yeah, you should. <laughs> Brian says, I need a spooky looking font. <laughs> Ooh, maybe Typekit has something for you. Yeah. Search spooky, let's see what comes up. <laughs> Just a bunch of wingdings. Nothing came up, dang it. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Have to be a little more creative with our searching. <clears throat> What's up, Sarah? She says, working from home today while watching this and eating lunch but I watched them in the office yesterday, too. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Sarah, what are you having for lunch? It's the question of the day. We gotta know. What do you like to do while you're working? Do you like to watch live streams or listen to music? Um, I usually just like work and don't do anything else. You're very serious. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just that I feel like a lot of my work is involves a lot of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's just like, okay, I'm laying out something like real quick and then I don't have to think about it. But sometimes it's more complex where I actually need to sit and think about it mm -hmm. and then I don't want to have a distraction. 
and I'm working from home, I sometimes like watch a movie or so, like just in the background. Yeah, um, just noise. At the office, we usually listen to music. Cool. Like everyone yeah. listens to the same yeah, music. Yeah, everybody listens to the same music um, every day. There's somebody else who's DJing. So. That's fun. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. Cool. I don't know if I would like that. I kind of I want to be in my my little safe space yeah. when I'm working. <laughs> and I used to work at a place where they would play music over the loudspeakers, mm -hmm. super loud, and it would be the same playlist every single day. Oh. And that. That maybe took a few years off my life. I'm oh. not sure. <laughs> it was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, same music every day is kind of. Yeah, we unplugged too the much. speakers at some point. <laughs> we cannot do this anymore. Yeah. No, we usually have it like on kind of mm -hmm. a good uh, like volume. It's like not disturbing. We have like a lot of strategists too at our office, so mm -hmm. they really do a lot of thinking. Right. They're like writing up a, a ton of things. So. Mm -hmm. Um, always need to be respectful of your colleagues and who totally. else is in the office, so mm -hmm. not too loud. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, I love wearing headphones when I'm working mm -hmm. and like being totally in my own world, but I feel bad often because people are like, well, I wanted to ask you a question earlier, but you had your headphones in. I'm like, oh no, <laughs> you can totally just come over and like rip my headphones off. Aw. Please. Yeah, I like talking a lot while I'm working mm -hmm. with my colleagues. I'm just like chatting all day. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, all right, Stephanie, <laughs> pump the brakes. <laughs> they probably miss me right now talking. Oh, Kate. Hey, Kate, what's <laughs> up? One of my colleagues. I was going to say, yeah. I think one of your colleagues is here. <laughs> all right, Kate, does Stephanie talk your ear off in the office? <laughs> Confirm it or deny it. <laughs> uh, Sarah's wondering, the three fonts you said were Kepler, Futura, and Freight, I think? Yeah. Let's see if we can find it on Typekit. I'll show ya. And Sarah, I don't know if you ever answered us when we asked you what you had for lunch. Maybe I just missed, <laughs> maybe I just missed it. But this is important info that I need to know. Great. Let's see. <laughs> Kate says she does talk her ears off. I love it. <laughs> awesome. Is this what you're talking about? Uh, yeah. So yeah. there's like a ton of different versions mm -hmm. of this. So um, micro is like for really small sizes. Um, and then you have um, fried big Ooh. and fried display. So for different um, sizes and uses, there are like different um, cuts of the typeface. Goodness, there's so, yeah, so there are many. so many. That's why I like it a lot, because it's so versatile. Mm, that's true. Man, I'd be like overwhelmed by this. <laughs> it's the the bold ones and the black ones look so different. Oh, it almost yeah. looks like a totally different typeface than like the book or the yeah, light versions. Totally. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, wrong one. Okay, so jumping back into InDesign, I feel like this is getting cre pretty crazy down here. Yeah, a little um, wild. So I feel like it's kind of enough of like overlapping and stuff right now. I'm thinking of maybe taking off like some of these where I feel like it's getting a bit too busy. Um, and yeah, maybe adding like, yeah, no, I think that's probably fine over here. Mm -hmm. um, so this is it for spread number two. Um, we can move on, yay, <laughs> <laughs> to spread three. Um, so yesterday we set up this really interesting grid Super interesting. <laughs> <laughs> has 12 columns. Wow. Um, I set it up this way because um, spread number f uh, three is going to be um, purely typographical and there's going to be a ton of body copy. Um, it is, um, I'm going to paste in the story about the frog prince. Um, it's about transformation, like everything in this scene is about some sort of transformation right. and I like the story of like the ugly frog turning into the pretty prince. <laughs> the pretty prince, <laughs> nice. So, um, I'm gonna do this here, um, just unlocking my type layer. I'm gonna paste in um, just the headline. Here. <laughs> Computer's working yeah. hard today. Somehow my computer doesn't like to work today. Uh -huh. So, the frog prints. 
I have a, yeah, my headline um, paragraph style set. Um, I'm thinking of maybe turning this into white, so I might just, so I don't mess up my paragraph styles, just add a character style to it, which is just, I'm just gonna call it white mm -hmm. um, for the white copy, so. Cool, so you could apply that to any copy and it would just yeah. turn it white. Yeah. And the good thing is it doesn't mess up my initial um, headline paragraph style. Mm. So sometimes if you have like an override, like a override of your style, you would have a little plus here, and then I would go in and um, remove it. But then that means everything is gonna be reset to what the um, paragraph style is. So don't want that to happen mm -hmm. here. Um, I feel like uh, for yesterday I had like my text in um, a clipping mask, but since this is white, it it's works. not gonna print, so I'm just mm -hmm. not gonna bother with that. Yeah, that is an interesting thing to think about. Like, if you are gonna print it on newsprint, is it gonna be pure white? Is it gonna be yeah. a little off-white? Yeah. Interesting. It's always good to print out those testers. Yeah, I'm already really curious how those colors are going to look like. Right. Um, because it might not be how I expect it to be, mm -hmm. especially because I have a lot of colored um, backgrounds, like full bleed backgrounds. It's like, are they gonna shine through? Are they gonna influence each other mm -hmm. from page to page? So it's gonna be interesting to see once I print it. Yeah, very well could. Um, so I'm gonna just lock this cause I'm going to add um, the body copy to this. I was thinking of maybe just like overlapping it with the title since I was planning on having the text black. Um, let me see. I'm gonna use Futura for this. Yes. Yeah. That seems like a very frog prince typeface. <laughs> seems like a fits. Um, making it a bit smaller. Maybe pretty small. Very small. Yeah. Like a tiny little frog prince. Yeah, I'm, I'm planning on having like six, no, actually 12 uh, columns across. I know already that that text is probably not going to be enough for everything. So <clears throat> I'm just going to start repeating it after a while. Because oh. um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have all the text um, actually condense and condense more column per column. Mm -hmm. So in the end, it's like all black. Cool. So it's like a opposite um, transformation, mm -hmm. like the frog prince is actually gonna turn into something beautiful at the end, but the text is actually gonna turn into something ugly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting. Look at you, doing so much <laughs> thinking. Wow. Um, also, just to make things much easier, I'm just gonna justify the text um, because um, since I'm going to move things around so much and like condense it. I don't want there to be any weird line breaks. Um, yeah, just like making it really simple. Mm -hmm. And I feel like since this does have such a idea behind it, it's very conceptual, the actual, it's not like you have to go through every single line and make sure the kerning and like the, the rag, as you yeah. say, is correct. Right. It's almost just like a visual piece of art. Ooh, and we have about 50 seconds left until we're gonna be doing our chat and win. And chat, if you are new, this is one of the most exciting parts of the segment, let me tell you. So in about 40 seconds, we're gonna have you log in to Behance using your Adobe ID. You can make one really quickly. You can make one right now in the time left, 30 seconds. And then you will just be active in chat and you will have the chance to win. Awesome Adobe Live um, sticker, you see right here. Da, da, da. These are the little Adobe Life planets. You are part of this solar system. And then some Tatley and Adobe temporary tattoos. Very cool, you could cut them out. You could wear all of them at once. Even cut out specific little tools that are your favorites. Put them across your knuckles. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like a real, real rebel. <laughs> so we have about two seconds left. We are going to celebrate with some fireworks. Yay. Woo. So make sure <laughs> are logged in on Behance, get logged in, and when we come back from our video, get chatting. You will have one minute. Okay, see you soon. Who wants this stuff? 
So make sure that you're logged in on behance.net slash live. Say something in chat. Let's ask them a question. Um, what about, since we're in editorial design, mm -hmm. we could ask them what is your favorite design book? Ooh, like book design or book about design? About design. Like okay. it could be anything from packaging design, design theory, grids, mm -hmm. typography, anything really. Cool. Give us your favorite design books because we need your recommendations. We could all stand to read another book, yeah. I would say. I'm curious. <laughs> nice. Yes, these are temporary tattoos. Make sure you're chatting. Let's get the chat hype going. <laughs> and the winner of the chat is... Grandford. Yes, <laughs> Grand Freud. <laughs> he always uh, makes fun of us because we don't pronounce his name right. I think oh. it's Grand Froid. Oh. <laughs> he says, I didn't read any book. <laughs> well, GF, you are now the proud owner of this cool Adobe Live sticker and these awesome temporary tattoos. Make sure when you receive these, you take a picture of them and post them somewhere so that we can see how you use them. That would be awesome. Yay, congrats. Amazing. So that means we're 30 minutes into the segment and we have about an hour left for you to be working on your challenge submissions. Um, I don't think there are too many submitted yet. So make sure you get your submissions in so we can really take some time, give you feedback, and you could possibly win a free year of Creative Cloud, which is awesome. That's so amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so we have about an hour left. Yeah. Let's get back into work wrong screen. Yeah, I'm gonna, so I had some overflow text here, so I just continued um, the text box. Gonna just make all the columns with text the same height. So from here on, I was thinking of um, actually just taking this column of text and um, uh, making the letting one point smaller. Ooh. So for every column, the letting is going to be one point smaller. And here I'm also just going to make the tracking minus 25. Mm -hmm. So I see that I have a ton of text down here that's been moved um, from the overflow. So I'm just <laughs> going to add the same style. And just going to continue click clicking on the little plus, mm -hmm. And then I can just continue the text in the next text box. I love that part of InDesign. Yeah. It has that little like plus sign. You just click, boom, continue. Yeah. Easy. So this one's going to be two points from the original, um, smaller in letting. And then um, the tracking is going to be minus 50. And since um, the story is already over, <laughs> I'm just going to like copy paste um, the story in again. Cool. It's not like anyone's going to actually read no. it, unfortunately. <laughs> OK, so I'm just continuing with this. I really like seeing your sketches and your notes right here, because I can see the tiny little image. Do you mind if I show it, oh, actually? Oh, yeah, sure. OK, bring it over. The tiny little image of your idea and how it's actually coming to life. Yeah, so if you look at this one, this is about the frog prints. Um, I s mostly when I lay out things, I start thinking about like how could um, the headline be laid out? How does the text flow? So I'm just making like rough sketches mm -hmm. of like where I think things should be. And also you can see I started with like looser and then this is just black. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> And for this page, I have like pretty precise notes about like letting and um, tracking, just so in the end it's actually gonna be all black. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you've already kind of worked through this to make sure yeah. that it'll work. Love when a guest comes prepared. <laughs> Makes everyone's life easier. Yeah. I'm also just like I didn't want this to be like I'm trying it and then it actually doesn't work out in the end. So mm -hmm. this spread is a uh, very particular. Yeah. So here I'm just gonna also make this like I think 75 um, and then the letting at 9 point. So you can already see a little bit how this is like getting yeah. like denser and denser. It's a nice gradient. Um, let me check. I might think that this in the end is it the same. Okay. Good. Um, I'm just continuing. Mm -hmm. 
Um, column per column. Perfect. And this is another one of those kind of just, you just have to kind of work over and over and over again, just like you were doing with the, the flowers, bringing them above. So this is a great time to ask questions, chat. Oh, yeah. We're kind of working through not a monotonous workflow, but a repetitive one. Ask those questions. Let me see if I have any good ones. Hmm. <laughs> Abracadabra and Cap is back. Yes, I disappeared for a second, but I'm back. <laughs> What's up, Matthias? Shout out to all the awesome moderators out there, the Adobe Live team. You are amazing. We got Matthias, we got Tim, we got Adobe Live, aka Gus, aka GusBot3000? Have you been updated yet? <laughs> are you 4,000? He's ignoring me. <laughs> He's busy doing robot things. <laughs> and Panko, of course. Although he's rarely, he rarely shows his face in chat. Aw, thanks for the shout out. Appreciate it. I guess I'm counted. <laughs> Ooh, that's a great question, Vivi. Um, do you have any advice, Stephanie, on how to organize the workflow or how to optimize your time uh, when doing an editorial? Um, I feel like I usually just, um, when I start something, I usually just sit down and think about it for a while, just like to, when I get a brief, I just want to digest all the information first. Mm -hmm. So what I sometimes do is, depending on what type of project it is, I might just go in and take my notebook, um, write down some notes, think about like, oh, like, they want like an interesting layout for that book, like, we have images, we have text, we might have interviews, like how can this be laid out in an interesting way mm -hmm. that is not just standard. So I, I do like initial thinking and write down some ideas and then afterwards I might e either go online and swipe for some things or I might go into bookstores and actually have oh. a look at physical books because yeah. I feel like, edi especially editorial design, it feels so different on a screen than if yeah. you actually have the book in your hands. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you have like really interesting things happening, like half pages or like pop ups mm -hmm. or something, and you don't that that just doesn't get across online. Right, right. And you have to keep that in mind. Then once you go into a computer, like okay, this is gonna look different. Yeah. Like I promise it'll be cool. Just yeah. Get it out. So what I do a lot is like when after I get all that inspiration and I start designing things, um, it's often easy, easier for clients to understand what you want to do, especially if it's something that has um, special elements to it. Like, for example, if you wanted to do a pop-up, mm -hmm. it might not translate if you're presenting this in, a, like, in flat. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I would just then put in a slide of inspiration images of mm -hmm. photos I took maybe of other um, books or things that I found online that show you how pop-ups work mm -hmm. so they really understand yeah. that. Right, it's so important to actually show <laughs> them yeah. as close to the finished pro <laughs> product as you can up front or else they're like, mm. as if you show them something that's like real, quote unquote, they're like, oh yeah, that yeah. one, <laughs> it's done, that one. Yeah, and sometimes also like if you can't find a reference for this, um, I do like a lot of Photoshop mock-ups, like mm -hmm. real quick ones, um, so it's a bit easier to understand. Yeah, there you go. Gotta yeah. help them, help them <laughs> see your vision. Great answer. BB says thank you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, Sarah wants to know, Stephanie, are your parents the creative type, or how do you, how did you discover design? My parents both are not, like they don't have any creative jobs or anything, yeah. and um, I feel like they're also having a bit of a hard time sometimes with art. Mm -hmm. It's like, especially modern art, like my dad, he always says like, he doesn't understand. Yeah. Like, what is this? <laughs> not art. <laughs> That's not art, yeah. <laughs> I feel like they have a great appreciation for everything that is um, very, like, more like old Dutch masters, mm -hmm. kind of like, oil paintings, like all these things where it's really um, trying to recreate anything that's real. Yeah, it's very technically yeah. sound. Um, so I feel like my mom, she did a lot of watercolor paintings when I was little. Um, okay. And my dad used to do posters and stuff when he was about my age. Cool. But 
that kind of got lost over the years. Mm. So I was not really in a household where everybody was an artist or anything. Right. So for me, it was more, I actually um, was playing a lot of guitar and piano for mm. like over 10 years. And mm -hmm. that was more, more my creative outlet mm -hmm. until at one point I actually discovered that um, graphic design is a thing. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you stole your <laughs> yeah. dad's Photoshop Exactly. <laughs> I, I just like played around with stuff and then even I, I did like posters for events and stuff when mm -hmm. I was a teenager and I did not realize that that is actually a profession. Yeah. Like I've heard that there is this thing called graphic designer, but I always wondered what it was and I didn't like the sound of it. Mm -hmm. Like this is weird. I really got suspicious and then I found <laughs> out this? about my university and what courses they had mm -hmm. and actually I went there um, for their open house and mm -hmm. It's like, I was like, oh, this is actually what, what interests me. So. Yeah, you're like, I'm yeah. home. So not at all from a creative family. Man, I feel like that's, that's not a common story, but people not even realizing that they have this creative spark, even though their whole life they've been doing creative things, like playing instruments and such. Yeah. Very cool. Chat, if you have a similar story, let us know, or a totally different one. It's always interesting <laughs> to hear how people find, find, their, find their thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And no, that's a really cool question. Wondering how do you test um, that difference between screen and paper? And you probably just try and print it out. Right? Yeah, totally. Like um, usually I would print things out in real size to mm -hmm. see how it feels, if the sizes are right, if the type sizes are legible and feel good. Um, and then if it is anything that is extraordinary in a way f of production that is not just a flat book mm. like if it's a card that has a pop-up or a book that has like a page that folds out I like to just print this glue it all together and just have a look at how it feels and mm -hmm. if it works mm -hmm. so yeah. that's like really important because I feel like on the screen you, you really can't tell like how it's gonna feel no not at all and there's something just about like holding mm -hmm. even if it's a prototype or a mock-up you're like okay I can do this like yeah. it exists now we just need to finish it <laughs> Cool. Yeah, good questions. Keep them coming. Yeah. Appreciate it. And I'm serious, chat. I want to know, how did you find out you were creative? Or maybe you don't even consider yourself creative. Let me know that. Uh, Vivi says, I went through four different fields before I found out that this is what I really love to do. Wow, Vivi, what did you do? What other things have you done? Carson says, when I discovered design, I felt like I discovered a secret universe. <laughs> So cool. It does feel like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I started school for graphic design and something just never felt right to me. I was like, I know I love art, but why don't I love doing this? And then I discovered illustration, like as a thing, like that's a real job. And I was like, this is it. This is the one that I want to do. So cool. Yeah. Um, Sarah says, I started in Photoshop Elements as well. My, oh, amazing. Yeah, my mom <laughs> bought it from Costco, and I made MySpace banners and icons. Oh, yes. I love that. Sarah, same. I got Photoshop Elements um, because I asked my parents for a tablet when I was in middle school. Like, just a little drawing tablet, because mm -hmm. I, I love to do these things where you would go online and uh, draw, and then you could post the replay for other people to see. It was like MS Paint, but online pretty much. And I saw these people doing these beautiful drawings. And I was like, how are they doing this? And I figured out they were using a tablet, like with a pen. It's like, I need one of those. So my tablet came with Photoshop, and the rest is history. That's so fun. Thank you. <laughs> I still have it. It's like hiding somewhere. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Whoa, so many cool stories coming in. Oh, I love that. Man, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> Um, let's see, Ryan says, I discovered graphic design midway through high school and was always considered myself, always considered myself artistic, but was looking for how it can be practically applied as a profession. I think that's a lot of graphic yeah. designers. Yeah. They're like, I love making stuff, but yeah. I want a job. I feel like oftentimes it's also people are like, I want to be an artist or like, I just want to do something creative. Mm -hmm. And then you start looking for like what actually at the end might pay you mm -hmm. yeah. that's how, what I did like I, I I knew I wanted to do something that was creative mm -hmm. uh, it was either going to um, 
university and studying music mm. but then I was like maybe I don't really want to commit to that that much and I on the side was always doing these little things for people like either really funny like um, covers for people's CDs that they burnt like that they made themselves and oh. stuff like little yeah, DVDs, DVDs and stuff mm -hmm. so I just made like little covers and designed them for them or like invitations to um, my grandfather's 50th uh, 60th birthday or something there you like, go. I don't know yeah you probably <laughs> became that artsy one in your yeah. family so they're like hey Stephanie can you make this for me yeah and then I was <laughs> it was time to look for like what am I gonna do after mm -hmm. high school so Graphic go. design. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I tried to do that. I was like, I know graphic design is the <laughs> thing. That's how you get a job. And I really wanted to work in advertising, mm -hmm. like coming up with these big ideas, but I just couldn't couldn't force myself to actually physically do it. Yeah, Back I had to this thing. too. This like mentality when I went to university, saying I want to work in advertising. Mm -hmm. I did not know like what I that didn't know what that meant either. <laughs> was like at all. <laughs> And then halfway through, I'm like, no, I want to do branding. Mm -hmm. Actually, the first thing I thought when I started studying was, I never want to do a logo. Like, this is stupid. <gasps> and actually, this is what I'm doing every day now, yeah. and I love it. There you go. <laughs> it's funny how once you learn more about something, you're like, yeah. oh, I actually really like this. <laughs> Igor says, my first digital illustration was made in Photoshop in 2007. Nice. Igor, yeah. that might have been around when I was doing it, too. Yeah. Thinks about Photoshop elements. Yes. You know, using those crazy textural <laughs> brushes, like, like the grass brush, to actually make grass. Mm. Maybe not the best idea now. Well, it was also fun, like, just um, using, like, the burn tool and stuff mm -hmm. to just, like, slightly make stuff darker oh, yeah. illustrations. Yeah. I would yeah. do that all the time back in the MySpace days to, like, make my eyeliner darker. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, my, my makeup looked really good that day. But it's, like, so <laughs> obvious now if I were to look back. Oh, my like, God. Oh. I have so many images like that. Oh my gosh. Also, the smudge tool I used a lot. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. blur out things. Yes. yes. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> so vain. <laughs> uh, Anel says, I'm looking for user experience work now because they worked in publishing for five years, but now they're redoing their portfolio. Wow, that's a big jump. Publishing yeah. to user experience. Nice. What's up, Alexander? How you doing? Margarita got into graphic design in high school, starting with Photoshop CS3. Wow. I didn't even know what graphic design was in high school, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> I also didn't know. And then when I applied um, for university, like you had to show a portfolio. Mm -hmm. And I did not even know what a portfolio was. Like, like what? You want a book? But yeah. What? <laughs> so I don't know. So I, what I did was just like I had a huge basically like a binder like this size mm -hmm. kind of like folder kind of thingy and then I just had black sheets of paper where I glued my drawings on top and on the back I wrote like stupid names like they were like the, it has to need have a title and a year and what materials and I just made everything up and just like I don't even know what to call this drawing mm -hmm. like it's a drawing like what you want drawing one <laughs> yeah drawing one <laughs> No, and then I just sent that in and I got accepted, which I still don't understand why. <laughs> They're like, she has like, potential. Like, there was almost no design in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's wild, though, because you clearly have a knack for it. Yeah. You were molded <laughs> into a beautiful designer, yeah. like the frog prints. I feel like in, over the years, you just, like, learn a lot while you're doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so you're, like, really not going to college and, like, learning like you're not going there and already are a designer like no. you learn so so Become much one. yeah i didn't learn how to paint digitally until like my second year of college which is like what i do now that's like my thing it's crazy that i didn't even know what my that that was a thing and now i love it so much yeah uh, mary ellen is wondering where did you guys go to college I'll let you go first. Um, I studied in Austria in um, Graz, which is the second largest city. Um, oh. I lived there for about three years. Mm -hmm. And um, the university is called um, um, FH Uraneum, which is like the FH is short for University of Applied Sciences in oh, German. Cool. Mm -hmm. So um, they have all sorts of courses. It's not just design, like it's actually more um, focused on science and on all sorts of technology. Cool. 
So they they only have like two, three, maybe four design courses there. Mm -hmm. Like one of them is information design, um, which is what I did. Mm -hmm. It's um, a lot of different stuff, really. Yeah, you yeah. were telling me it's literally everything. Yeah, it's everything. Has to do with design. It's super interesting. <laughs> yeah, so cool. <laughs> Very well rounded. And I uh, started school at Ohio State University doing graphic design, and then I was like, no, not for me. And then I transferred to an actual like fine arts school, Columbus College of Art and Design, where I studied illustration. It's nice. And it was awesome. So cool. I thought I was going to be like a, a children's book illustrator. Like that was my thing. But then I was like, wait, maybe not. Catherine, you're from Columbus? Me too. <laughs> what? OH girl? That's awesome. You can see the CCAD from your window at work. Whoa, small world. That's amazing. What do you do, Catherine? Something creative. Megan says, I go to OSU. That's so cool, Megan. What are you studying? Man, my Ohio peeps in the house. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, Catherine works at Motorist Insurance. So cool. I know the Motorist building. I know exactly what you're talking about. Well, thanks for watching Adobe Live at work. So she's not creative, but I'm a freelance designer on the side. So you are creative, but you're just not full time. OK, got it. Madison, you also graduated from OSU. What? You are always all hiding in the woodwork. I talk about Ohio all the time, and everyone's like, what's Ohio? Where's that? <laughs> so cool. Uh, Megan says, I'm in communications media, but want to attend a grad program for graphic design, editorial design. Awesome. You should. Definitely. It's getting there. Yeah, it's getting almost, dark. almost at the end of the spread. It's hard because once you get further down, you have to copy and paste it oh, so many yeah. more times. So much. <laughs> but yeah, now you can't read it anymore. Mm -mm. Really, so it's just a visual. Doesn't matter. Yeah, if, That's if true. it's repeated or not. <laughs> Whoa. That's so crunched. Mm -hmm. nice. It's gonna get worse. <laughs> it's gonna get worse, she says with a smile. It's just gonna get worse. I kind of like that, just like distorting the type. Um, mm -hmm. It's like something you don't do a lot in editorial design because right. you always try to have everything really legible. Yeah, communicate. But since this is a zine and it's more <laughs> playful, I was thinking of just doing exactly the opposite. There you go. Sometimes if that's yeah. like your thing, you just need to you just need to mess with it sometimes. Yeah. Not take it so seriously. Gus, did you see there's lots of OSU people in the chat? <laughs> Gus bot or Adobe Live also went to OSU. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Oh, Muhammad, that's a great question. I'm gonna let Stephanie answer it. He's wondering, communication design and graphic design, what is the difference? I feel like that it really depends on like what you want to focus on. Mm. But I feel like um, graphic design could be really anything. Like it could be a packaging, it could be a logo, it mm -hmm. could be um, an ad or something. And I feel like communication design really um, focuses more on bringing information across in a way mm -hmm. where or like um, helping communicate certain things to people. So it's more, I feel like, things like maybe ads, uh, instructional things, yeah. like, um, mm -hmm. I don't know, what else could it be? Um, books probably too, depending on like brochures maybe, like all sorts of things that just try to convey something more that is not purely um, and graphic. Yeah. yeah. I agree. It's there's a lot of overlap. It's a lot of overlap. Yeah, and you could almost like describe the same thing with both yeah. communication and graphic design. I think it's really hard to define a line and mm -hmm. say this is that and this is the other. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. It really depends on like how you wanna. Um, yeah. Do that it's yeah. it's really almost like um, an unnecessary yeah. difference. It's it's all design. But it's good to have some yeah. differences. 
Uh, Walter says, I agree. I'm a graphic designer, photographer, video maker, package, brochure, everything. So yeah. Wow. You're a designer, Walter. <laughs> Communication, graphic, all of it. Yeah, everything. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Carson, great question. Do you have a design or illustration hero? So I guess a design hero for you and an illustration hmm. hero for me. That's a good question. I don't I'm know. Lift mine <laughs> up so I can show you. I, I have don't, three. No, I don't know if I, I have one. Anyone that you like follow on Instagram and you look at for inspiration? Um... I don't know. I feel like there is um, one illustrator slash designer that I really like a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I just like how playful her illustration work is and her design work is like very precise mm -hmm. and communicates very nicely what brands are about. Her name is Lotta Niemannen. I feel like um, L O T T. Yeah, L O T T A. A. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I like her work a lot. Cool. All right, I'm gonna show you. This This is who I'm into right now. We've got Matt Houston, who actually went to CCAD, my fellow Ohio people. Super cool style, very gritty, very fun. Uh, we got Matt Forsyth, two mats. Beautiful paintings, but also very graphic. A little bit dark. And we've got John Klassen, kind of similar actually. Got some traditional paintings. He's also an illustrator who does a lot of children's books, kind of breaking the bounds of what a children's book can be. Really beautiful. Negative space. So yeah, I feel like these three people have a lot of similarities, kind of dark, kind of gritty and crunchy, but still fun and beautiful. Yeah. There's my, ooh, look at it, it's done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah, I'm working over here. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I can show my my design inspiration people too. <laughs> oh yeah, show them. Yeah, um, please. Let's see. Well, uh, first Lotta Niemann, mm -hmm. which is um, she's a Finnish designer. I think also based in New York. Um, she does illustration as well as graphic design. Pretty. Um, so I feel like this is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Also because. Um, I like it. I just love the way she plays with color yeah. and her illustrations are really playful. Um, I have a friend, um, Christina Batushova. Um, she does. So um, she's based in Austria. That's how I know her. Mm -hmm. um, like I love her style. Whoa. Um, it's uh, very diverse. It always has like some sort of nod. I feel like to the past a little bit. Yeah. Like it always feels a little retro, but it does. super modern mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, all this is her work. That's a really interesting yeah. website design. <laughs> I love that. I also love like the little like uh, icon mm -hmm. you have like here where the mouse is, depending wow. on where you are. Everything yeah. is designed. I love this. Mm hmm Yeah, that typeface. Yeah. It's like, very nice. It reminds me of Volkswagen. Hmm. I feel like I know the name of that typeface, but I forget it. <laughs> maybe someone can tell us in chat. Yeah, maybe. Man. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for sharing your inspiration. Yeah. Two strong ladies. Yep. Uh, ooh, that was a great question from, where'd it go? Megan. Uh, so Megan wants to get into editorial design, and she's wondering, should I go into visual communication design or graphic design? I don't know. <laughs> I feel like, well, it, it depends. Like, it really depends, like, what your program offers. Like, I would just, like, read through what the course actually offers yeah. you. Like, mm -hmm. if one of them has more of a print or editorial design focus, then that would be the way to go. Right. Yeah, because I feel like if the other one is just doing, I don't know, infographics and maybe just, like, or just packaging or mm -hmm. something, that might not be what you want to learn. Yeah. Totally, and if Megan, if you're talking specifically about the VCD program at OSU, I can tell you it's really good, and they probably teach you print layout. <laughs> I'm not sure though. <laughs> Carson also likes that typeface. Yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> Minville says this is amazing paragraph formatting, very Dolly esque. Yeah. <laughs> nice. It's getting really dark over there. <laughs> it's pretty dark over there. Yeah. Get a little serious. 
Um, so now we have our frog prints um, transforming it. into something beautiful, but also being illegible in the end. Yeah. Um, we can actually jump into the next spread. Well, can um, we, before we jump in, can yeah. you show all of them? Sure. Scroll on through, take a little yeah. walk. So cover mm -hmm. with the interlocking logo and the illustration. Yeah. And then the big open air with the quote and some like a dying tulip and some dried up petals. Nice. And you said that you used the same background because those would probably be printed on the same actual sheet. Yeah, exactly. So I just want the cover to have uh, this color and not be um, kind of mixed with any other color that mm -hmm. might be on the other side of the paper. Right. So um, that's why I chose orange for the first spread as well, so there's no weird mixing of colors on the cover. Yeah. It's gonna happen to the other pages, like I feel like probably the light blue is gonna be a little washed yeah. with the orange mm -hmm. in the end, but I felt like for the cover, it was important mm -hmm. to have it like just that nice orange. Yeah, very true. And that's funny, um, Adobe Live is saying, anybody working on the challenge, and as soon as he asked, somebody submitted for the challenge. Ooh. So, y'all, there's only <laughs> one submission so far. This is a perfect opportunity for you to get some quality time, getting a critique, uh, and possibly win a free year of Creative Cloud and have your work featured on Adobe Live. Yeah, I want to see them all. Mm -hmm. Yep, Stephanie <laughs> wants to give some good yeah. feedback. <laughs> Check out your skills, and this is totally for all skill levels. Please do not be intimidated if you aren't super comfortable in your InDesign skills. We have a template for you to use if you'd like to, totally okay, and a gallery for you to use for your images. So we were setting it up for you to just spike it down, just get a good get a good sports analogy going on there. <laughs> uh, Valter's working on it, super cool. So you have a bow. You can see the timer right below me. 27 minutes left. Get those in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Minville, how did you create the image outlines with text? Sorry, I just came into the room and it was covered already. Image outlines with um, text. Maybe these the illustrations? illustrations? Yeah. Um, so the illustrations themselves are all hand drawn. Mm -hmm. And what I usually, with most of my work, what I do is I sketch a lot and oftentimes digitize things. Um, if you go into my portfolio, you can see that a lot too, where I, for example, have hand-drawn things, like for example, if you go into subject, uh, yeah, like this is all hand-drawn and then scanned in and digitized. Nice. So um, it's pretty similar here with the illustrations as well, where mm -hmm. I just like do quick drawings, um, mo uh, probably mostly in black, that's like the easiest to digi digitize, yeah, or agreed. some other very dark color. Mm -hmm. I made the mistake of like drawing a lot in like light blue and pink and realized this does not scan No, at you basically all. <laughs> have to gen turn it black in yeah. Photoshop. And then <laughs> um, so it's always easier if you start out black and then um, you turn the image white so I can actually show you yeah, let's see uh, my file um, let's maybe do this one from the cover um, oh. so I just add the black background so you can see this mm -hmm. so what I usually do is um, if I just um, disable my layer mask I started out um, painting this in red yeah and then I just like turn it black and white. Um, and then I can just add like some sort of color to this, like maybe some sort of uh, blue. And then it, this nice. turns blue. And mm -hmm. just so that I can actually place this on colored backgrounds, I just added a mask to it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like cut out of this. Wow, that's yeah. a really cool workflow. That not saying it's wrong at all, but it's not how I would do it. So I'm yeah. really interested to see <laughs> how you work. This seems much better organized, actually, than yeah. what I would I, do. I tried like also vectorizing things like this, mm -hmm. but first of all, my Illustrator is crashing every time I try doing it uh -oh, because Adobe. it's like so much like information. <laughs> yeah, it's big um, too. So I just try to save out really, really big um, Photoshop files mm -hmm. to be able to print at high res. Right. Yeah, yeah that's okay to do. I think a lot of people are really scared to print raster 
Yeah. So it's like, no, you, you can't. No, it's fine if it's like big enough and mm -hmm. if in the end um, it has enough DPI in the actual layout. Like mm -hmm. for example, if we go in and have a look at my links, like. Let's look at your links. It says, so the actual PPI of this is 72, mm -hmm. which is how I saved it, and then effective is 389, which means that in the size that I have it on the page, it's actually 389 um, PPI, so mm -hmm. it's going to print high res, and that's yeah. good. And it's it's a PNG, it's not even vector, so yeah. Boom. works out. Yeah, you just have to kind of know how to game the system. Got to game that Adobe system. <laughs> <laughs> Carson says, I want to join the challenge, but it's 3 a.m. here, and I should probably go to sleep. Carson. That is really late. <laughs> sleep is important. We're super glad yeah. you're here. You can always watch the replays. That's amazing, though. I don't think I, if I tried to stay up till 3 a.m., I don't think I would be alive anymore. No, I think I would just fall asleep at one point. Yeah, that's true. I would be unconscious, or I would be dead. <laughs> uh, um, Ryan says, I had a really, really, really big Photoshop file yesterday, 1.3 gigabytes. Oh my gosh. Ooh. I had a smart object in a smart object in a smart object. I wanted to keep things non destructive. <laughs> yeah. I end up with that a lot too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're like, how do I compromise here? Yep. What do I destroy? Man. <laughs> Catherine says, I want to do the challenges when I'm not at work. This is too tempting. I know, Catherine, it's hard. <laughs> Wondering who else is watching this at work. Yeah. Who else has this on your second monitor in a tiny little window? <laughs> <laughs> and open something up when your boss walks by. Just kidding, <laughs> I don't I don't recommend that. <laughs> okay. Cool. Well, at least like if you're getting work done while you're watching, I think that's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so many people are like, oh, me. <laughs> so many people that have not chatted yet. What's up, Dania? Oh, I love that. Basilio. <laughs> Rachel, I'm guilty. Menville, watching at work. Tim, you are technically watching at work. This this is your work. <laughs> Ryan, in the corner of my screen. I bet we're so like tiny. tiny. <laughs> okay, we'll be a little bigger now with fireworks. What's up, Hi. Ryan's boss? Hello. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, Angel is secretly trying to watch at work. Alex is watching at work. <laughs> Guess you're also Everybody naughty. Everybody is crazy. <laughs> Keep doing it, though. <laughs> Alexandra, that's right, you're multitasking at work. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a go good skill to have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lynn says, my boss is cool with it, I'm watching at work. Got oh, cool working boss. from home. <laughs> working while watching, there yeah. you go. Nice. <laughs> Ryan, unfortunately, my screen faces away from the boss. <laughs> Smart man. <laughs> All right, enough about being bad influences <laughs> to our lovely community. So we were talking about your illustrations yeah. and how they were created. Because the, I think the person thought that the illustrations were made up of letters because mm. they're so textural. But that is not the case. That would be cool, no, though. No, it's all just a hand drawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, yeah, I placed them in here just to repeat that um, real quick mm -hmm. um, on a separate layer. So I have this background illustration layer, which is like all behind the type. And then I have this uh, second layer, which is on top of the type. So I create like the overlapping where you can see that here. Nice. I wonder if all of those little versions of it that you pasted on top, if that makes your file much bigger. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe that's why it's so sad today. Yeah. So slow, <laughs> but not too slow. Yeah. It's OK. Yeah. <laughs> it's doing its job. Cool. Yeah. We got this one. Yeah, so we have the continuation of the quote and, and some more illustration here and then on the third spread it's just purely typographic that's what we created today yeah and if you actually print that that's definitely gonna bleed through oh yeah it's gonna be so <laughs> black on the other yeah side. it's just gonna be like two bars of black <laughs> right there yep <laughs> so, so it's interesting to think what's gonna be on the other side of it yeah so if we scroll down um, it's gonna be a yellow page um, so my third, um, or actually, yeah, third like segment in this oh, the jokes. is yes. the fruit jokes. So I was thinking of uh, having two headlines. One of them is going to be on the first spread and one of them on the second. The first is for old peas. 
Aww. and speechless. <laughs> speechless. Speechless. <laughs> and I'm just gonna have like all these like uh, jokes um, accompanying some images that I have. Mm -hmm. So I started. Okay, I, I started with the most disgusting one. Yuck! <laughs> Ew! Trick so, warning. Yeah, I have a. Uh, some paper cutouts that I scanned in. Really? Yeah, cool. and then I like I I just like having like the slight paper texture mm -hmm. in the back and the right. little shadow from scanning it, and um, I just placed the images on top, mm -hmm. added a little bit of the like dotted effect to it, like tiny. Oh tiny. yeah, I see. Um, and because I feel like when once I print this, I don't want it to feel super high res and perfect. Right. I just want it to have that bit of a um, analog feel to it. So I just added some effect on top. Mm -hmm. So That's I hope smart. that turns out nice in print. So I have the, all these images of this like rotten fruit and vegetables, like all plants. Um, How did you get these? I got them from Adobe Stock. <gasps> Yeah. No, you didn't. <laughs> yes, I did. What did you search? Just like rotten food? Yeah. Uh. I just like, I, I search for like rotten vegetables and stuff. Um, let's see what comes let's up. See, <laughs> like I have it, I saved them all in my library. Just like all these um, disgusting images. <laughs> Who is this girl? All this. <laughs> also, I like this like smashed tomato mm -hmm. and smashed. Um, Strawberry. So if you just like look for, I don't know, let's say rotten tomato, it might come up. Whose job is this? Oh, what yeah. stock photographer is like, I got yeah. this rotten I was food. actually really surprised. I thought there would be nothing, but mm -hmm. yeah, there they found are quite their niche. a few. <laughs> okay, let's stop the <laughs> Yes, let's. <laughs> it is almost lunchtime. Please. <laughs> almost. <laughs> oh, man. So um, I already prepared these on these pa paper cutouts. So I'm um, thinking of just like placing them in here, scattered around, and then adding like the little jokes to, to juxtapose um, yeah. the images. I'm um, gonna just start out actually just uh, putting in the headlines for this. So let's say speech less. Did you come up with these little lines? Um, just with the speechless and the world peace, mm -hmm. but the jokes I found like on websites for elementary school kids. For babies. Yes, uh, <laughs> to just like learn the vegetables and fruits. Oh, I see. I love that. I, I didn't know like that I would stumble upon this, mm -hmm. but I was just thinking, well, what could I do with um, all these like images? Because I found the images first and I knew I wanted to do something Right. With it, but yeah. Huh. So, as someone who I'm guessing English is not your first language. No. Do these jokes like are they funny to I you? I find them funny. Okay. It's also just because I have pretty dry humor. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're a dad. Yeah. You like dad jokes. Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> Man, I've always wondered that because I don't think I've ever come across a joke in another language that I like. Totally yeah. understood, but I'm definitely not like fluent in another language. Yeah, I Maybe feel like it. I had the same. Like I studied um, French and Spanish in mm -hmm. school, but I can't like I don't know anything anymore, unfortunately, because oh. I never used it. Like mm -hmm. I I learned it in high school, and that was it. Then I went on to college in Austria, mm -hmm. where everything is German, and then I moved here, where like English is my main language. Mm -hmm. So. All of that got lost, and I felt like every time I heard a joke in French or in Spanish, I was just like, I don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. That's not compute. <laughs> I mean, I think two languages is pretty pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> still good. Still good. <laughs> Ryan says that he lost his appetite. Thanks, um, Stephanie. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta lose your appetite for the name and the name of art. Yeah. Ryan. I'm, okay. I'm right there with you. <laughs> Ooh, I see there are two submissions Yes, now. <laughs> we've got Mahul and we've got Heather. Okay. So, chat, you got 15 minutes. Let's. You, you could even start right now. You yeah, download just keep and design. them coming. Get something <laughs> in. It doesn't have to be long. It just has to be more than one page. We already have the images for you. Play with some type. Get a little funky. It is the 90s. It was a crazy <laughs> time. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was fun. Good times. So get that in. And then if you're still working, we also have Lucas and Michael's stream 
to finish out the day from one, two, three. <laughs> Ooh, yes, let's get those dad jokes coming in Ooh, chat. All right, I don't that. look, don't look. Let me ask you. Uh, <laughs> what I did? already saw it, oh. sorry. <laughs> Who can I, everyone, oh, I can't <laughs> tell this joke to anyone now. I'm just gonna read it out loud. All right, what did the father tomato say to the baby tomato whilst on a family walk? Catch up, you big baby. <laughs> you big silly baby. <laughs> you dingus. <laughs> Oh man, Tim says your English is very good, Stephanie. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I agree. Totes, good. Yay. <laughs> That's why I was like, you probably get these jokes because your English seems to be like a native. <laughs> yeah, almost. <laughs> seems like it. Yeah, so um, I don't know, maybe we should start with can, tomato, maybe? No, not this uh. one. Uh. This is, like, if you're hungry right now, you shouldn't watch this. Yeah. <laughs> Public service announcement. Yeah. <laughs> Tim wants to know I <laughs> Tim <laughs> wants to know how your Deutsch is. It's good. <laughs> Can you say that in German? Es ist gut. Es ist gut. <laughs> Please keep things in English, Stephanie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like an inside joke. We're always saying that in chat. <laughs> Uh, Shalva, can we explain the challenge once more? Sure, so we are gonna be creating a 90s inspired zine. So Stephanie is actually working on a zine right now. And yeah, Adobe Live, all the details are in the challenge tab. Uh, so use the template we provide for you, use the images we provide for you and create some sort of small form magazine. A zine, and you've got 13 minutes. Nice. I can't believe you actually printed these and cut them out. Yeah, I, I like doing that just because I, I like the feel of like just working with my hands mm -hmm. and I like combining um, digital and analog in a way. So I try to do that as much as possible while I'm working. It really, I think, goes the extra mile that you, and you also went digital to analog, back to digital, and then and you're then gonna go to analog, analog, so yeah. it's gonna get really <laughs> <Yeah>. like, gritty. <laughs> it's like almost Xeroxing something oh, over yeah. and over and over again. Oh, that's so nice. That's like <laughs> how zines were made, and yeah. first and foremost, just Xeroxed, and that's how they got so kind of grungy. Yeah. Very cool. The more you know. All right, we have two submissions, Mahul and Heather. Who else is gonna step up to the plate? Show us their 90s goodness. Are these all from the same stock person? Um, I'm not sure, I, I don't think so. Mm. There's many rotten yeah, food photographers. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of different styles too. Um, yeah, I spent like one evening doing this and then afterwards I did not have an appetite oh, anymore. Oh, you had weird <laughs> dreams, rotten food dreams and yeah. jokes. <laughs> Who's there? That's a great question. She's wondering, how would you describe your design style in three words? Oh. <laughs> Only three. Okay, um, let me think. Think. Um. It's elegant in a way. It is um, very um, detail focused. Okay. And what's the third word? Fun, maybe? <laughs> fun question mark? <laughs> so elegant, detailed, and fun. Yeah. I agree. I can see that for sure. I like uh, having fun while working. Mm -hmm. I, I like working with fun copy, kind of like these like uh, dad jokes. Yeah just because like, I don't know, you should have fun while you're working. Like I sometimes agree. it can be like very monotone, very serious, mm. and you need to like loosen it up a little. Right, I think type in it of itself can be kind of serious, just like letters and information. So let's have some fun with it. Yeah. Take your hair down, loosen up. <laughs> okay, so I have three different tomato jokes and I only can use one. Okay. So I'm wondering if we should have the audience vote on which one. I think you're entirely correct. We yeah. should do that. 
Also, I'm going to add the one that we had before oh, from the chat, which yeah. was, um, what did the father tomato mm -hmm. say to the child mm -hmm. whilst on a walk? That's like exactly what it was. And then ketchup. Perfect. So we have these. Maybe I'll just like put them in a separate document and mm -hmm. then um, number them. Perfect. Make it a little bigger. Tim says, if you ask me, use all of them. <laughs> <laughs> They're all good. Okay. One, two, three, and four. I know which one I want. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, W Live the ketchup joke is pretty morbid. <laughs> A little bit, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you better catch up or else we're gonna <laughs> squish you and mix you with vinegar and sugar. <laughs> Alright, Lisa says one or four. Okay. Four, <laughs> three. Two votes for four so far. Yeah. My vote is for one, so two votes for one. <laughs> a lot of people like the ketchup one. One. Yeah. So hmm. morbid. <laughs> people are saying four. Okay, let's do four then. Mm -hmm. Also, we have um, two tomatoes here, so. Oh, okay. It's father and child. <laughs> <laughs> Both rotten, which is yeah. messed up. <laughs> well, the joke's morbid, so. Yeah. It kind of fits. True. It's like what's on their tombstone. Is the joke? Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Yay! Um, gonna so use contour again. How did I know? I knew it. Yeah, my favorite. <laughs> You're like, I'm not ashamed. Nope. I use it so much. It's crazy. It's a good one. And chat, if you're wondering why I'm always looking over here and acting like I can see her work, it's because there's a beautiful monitor over here where I can see a big <laughs> screen of her screen. <laughs> Yeah, Walter, this is the second stream. So we will have Lucas and Michael coming up next from one, two, three. And then we will say goodbye until tomorrow, 9 a.m. Pacific time. And speaking of Lucas, he's here. He came back for a second day. He said, I guess I'll give him another try. <laughs> uh, I used the wrong. Wait a second, I have too many Futuras installed oh, on here. Oh no! What an <laughs> issue. Yeah. Wait, okay. This is the, yeah, the right one. And which one are you going to use for this? Medium. All right. And I think I'm going to just have it not all caps. And I was thinking, keep it a bit interesting and not being able to see the answer right away, I'm just gonna rotate it around <gasps> and put it like at the back. Genius, it's like a little, a la have you ever had a Laffy Taffy candy? No, what's that? It's like a little, little candy, a little taffy candy, but it always has a joke under the wrapper. Ooh. And then I think the answer is upside down. I would love that. They're always so <laughs> bad, you would love it actually. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always like, submitted by Timothy, age six. Oh. That. Yeah, that is a six-year-old's <laughs> joke, isn't it? Yeah. Well, they have, like, then all the dad jokes. Yes. <laughs> Seriously. Ooh, Siobhan, those are fighting words. Well, not really. This is a good this is a good comment, actually. Siobhan says, I have a lot of trouble seeing InDesign as a creative tool. I think I need to watch the replays of these streams a few times. What yeah. do you say to that? You think it's creative? Yeah, I feel like um, I watched a couple of other people's streams, like mm -hmm. um, previous streams, and I feel like I learned quite a lot of stuff. And mm -hmm. um, it's really interesting to see also other people's processes because I feel like mine is very specific to like how I like to work, and totally. other people might have uh, solutions to problems that are very very different, mm -hmm. like solutions that I might have not come up with myself. Right. So it's really interesting to see that. Yeah, definitely, and I think. For me, Siobhan, maybe just because I'm not a huge like type person, I don't super enjoy like laying out type. I would also kind of agree with you that it doesn't feel very creative. It almost feels like, I don't know, monotonous or it's just a tool to get something done. But seeing what Stephanie's creating and everyone else this week, it's, I think it's definitely creative. 
throwing text on top of text, making black bricks out of condensed <laughs> text. Very cool. Yeah. So why did the lemon stop? Uh, I'm not gonna look. Why did the <laughs> lemon stop? Because he... Because it ran out of juice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A little on the nose, maybe. <laughs> Man, but this is a good point from Carson. He, uh, they love the idea that you put the answer upside down because then you mm. actually have to physically yeah. turn this big zine. It's like 11 oh, yeah. by 17 inches, yeah. totally around. I like how, um, I don't know, like, I feel like in my childhood there were always these, like, little um, books, magazines, kind of, that you could buy at the newsstand that mm -hmm. have, like, the little puzzles and stuff. Yeah, totally. And sometimes they would have the answers on the bottom corner upside down, mm -hmm. so you ca can't read them. Like, if you just, like, look at it, you right. have to turn it around. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like that idea Aww. of hiding the answers a little yeah, bit. Yeah, nostalgic. And yeah. also the idea that it's going to be on newsprint, so it's really flimsy, and it's mm. going to be, like, crinkling, and you're, like, trying oh, yeah. to flip this <laughs> thing around. Amazing. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. It's gonna make a lot of noise. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good. Why not? Um, let's <laughs> see. Let's right. move on to the cabbage. You're gonna have to ask me. I'm not gonna look at the answer. Why do cabbages win at races? Something about their heads. Yeah. Because they keep their heads on. Because <laughs> <laughs> their heads roll? <laughs> because... They know how to get ahead. Blue <laughs> Okay. You wordsmiths. Get me. <laughs> That's what you get. I like word jokes. Yeah. I just, uh, yeah, I, I just love playing around with language and mm -hmm. distorting it and tur turning around meanings and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> super interesting. It's always a surprise. Yeah. Oh, Muhammad is wondering about your process for digitizing your drawings. So you scan it and take it into Photoshop, yeah. right? So what I do is I take the drawing. I always try to um, just draw on a paper that has a size that fits in my scanner. Because what I did this year, I did not do this. <gasps> and I had drawings that <laughs> extended. So I had to scan it in three times or two times. Yeah. And that is like really annoying. So make sure you actually <laughs> scan it in letter size or A4, mm -hmm. something that fits in your scanner, and then just um, scan it at least at 300 dpi, if not higher, mm -hmm. um, just so that you actually have a high-res file of this. And then afterwards, I would just go into Photoshop, what I showed before, mm -hmm. and just um, digitize it in there. Yeah, there's tons of tutorials on getting your line art to be have a transparent background or mm -hmm. what have you. So. Um, lots of different ways you can go about that. Yeah, and also if it's a simpler just line drawing where you actually don't really want to have that texture, mm -hmm. you can just also take the black and white image um, where you have like a ton of contrast, bring it into Illustrator and just vectorize it in there too. Yeah, yep, totally. The image trace tool is very, yeah. it's a lot better than it used to be. I love it, mm -hmm. I use it all the time. It can be super helpful. So don't, don't look, don't okay. look. <laughs> don't look. Why did the eggplant grow up big and strong? Because he ate, ate his eggs and they're full of protein and good fats and healthy <laughs> cholesterol. What? Almost, no, because it had o uh, good aubergines. <laughs> That's like a European joke. I like that. Aubergine. Yeah. Oh, I like it. That's my favorite one so far. <laughs> You have to imagine me just finding these jokes online. Like, I was just like laughing so hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Ryan says, LOL. <laughs> laugh out loud. I doubt you laughed out loud, Ryan. I doubt it. <laughs> okay, now only the pepper left on this spread. Uh oh, what could it be? Oh. I can't remember. I have two pepper things, but. I think that one was reserved for the last spread. So this one is, oh, where did the pepper go to have a few drinks? Oh, some, some sort of bar, pepper bar, spicy, 
hot Mexico. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the salad bar. <laughs> 70. <laughs> It's not funny. I know. <laughs> you like look at me so mischievously. Like, you get it? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I'd love to hear Stephanie um, stand up. Just you on a stage with a spotlight. Oh and you're God. just I telling these jokes. I should do like a stand up comedy. Oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> All right, Chad, that is it. That's our challenge deadline. I know it snuck up on all of us while we were having such a, a foolhardy time with these with these jokes. Uh, yeah, thank you for submitting everyone. We had quite a few come in right at the end. So we will be looking at these in about five minutes after I get them all open. And we'll have some time to look at them all and, and give some feedback. And if you're still working, no worries. We've got Lucas and Michael's stream coming up from one, two, three. So you'll have a full other stream to work on them. Oh no, GF, I'm so sorry. InDesign crashed when I pressed publish online. No. <laughs> Hopefully you saved. Yeah. Sad face. Wow, so many came in. We're <laughs> right at the buzzer. Oh, amazing, that's yeah. a lot. Mm -hmm. Impressed, I'm impressed, Chet. I'm super happy. I wanna see them all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hear my name being whispered in the back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Carson, go get some sleep. He says, gotta go to be back tomorrow. Good night from Malaysia. <laughs> Bye. Good night, get some sleep. <laughs> Walter says, we asked for more challenge submissions and we got it. It's true, ask and we will receive. See, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Got them all open. <laughs> Daniel wants to know, or Danya, uh, is there a reason that you write aligned the question for all of them, for, so the joke for all of them, but not for the pepper? Oh, for the last one? Because, um,. I don't want to. I don't want to say it yet. It's gonna ruin the surprise. Oh, okay. Yet. <laughs> There's a surprise. I love surprises. So cool. Do you think we'll be able to see the surprise today, or no, will I have to I wait think for tomorrow? No, I think tomorrow. So you have to tune in tomorrow then. Yeah. <laughs> for more dad jokey. Yeah. Goodness. <laughs> I'm peeking through all of these, and they are so colorful, so fun. One of them is grungy. Ooh, oh, I love them all. Oh, two of them are <laughs> grungy. <laughs> One is very angsty. See an avocado. Yeah, my angsty <laughs> avocado. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. okay, so you let me know when you're ready to start looking. I think I am ready now. Perfect. Yeah. All right, chat. Are you ready to look at some challenge submissions? We're gonna go over all of these, give some feedback, let you know what's awesome and uh, celebrate your successes and also maybe give you some ideas on how you can make it even better. And at the end, Stephanie will pick a winner for a free year of Creative Cloud. Let's go. So this first one. Oh, nice. Do this, bring up my screen a little bit. I love the patterns. Mm-hmm. And the color scheme's really nice. Yeah, this looks like maybe they rotoscoped or traced over a mm -hmm. photograph, which is super cool. Yeah. Added their own drawings. Mm-hmm. Nice layout. Cool. I feel like I saw this one in the last segment, so maybe they updated it. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. I like I like playing with that uh, the shapes and the colors mm -hmm. and the photography feels good. Like it feels like um, very on point with the theme. Right. So it's yeah. nice. I think I like the cover the most. Yeah, me too. It feels the most um, unique mm -hmm. to me. Nice, yeah. so great job. This is my angsty avocado. <laughs> How healthy fats, Doc Martens, and Lynn, Lynn, led to the 90s most brooding, <laughs> broodingest band. <laughs> nice, my chemical romance, my angsty avocado. I love that, I, mm -hmm. I like playing with the, with the type, the distortion. Yeah. Yeah. 
Definitely. There's even some over here where it's mm. getting closer, kind of yeah, wiggly. Yeah, cool. And even just taking the same photograph, cutting it mm. out like a paper cut. Yeah, it's fun. Layering it in the, the classic 90s <laughs> grunge plaid buffalo yeah. check. Very nice job. All right. Oh, more patterns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is all about 90s jackets. Mm -hmm. We've got the windbreaker. We've got the vintage jacket. We've got the workout jacket. We've got the tubular jacket. We've got the dinosaur jacket. <laughs> I want to learn more about all of oh, these. Oh, more jackets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that little dinosaur. Yeah, he's like the little mascot. <laughs> and just this. Yeah. Love that. <laughs> more jackets. Mm. A lot of these uh, color combinations might be kind of hard to look at yeah. like here, and it's vibrating a little bit, but I don't know if that's a bad thing since it is a zine. Yeah. I'm just wondering if there's, like, I like the color combinations themselves, but mm -hmm. I'm wondering if there's any way to bump up the contrast a little bit so it gets a bit, um, is a bit more legible, mm -hmm. like either making the blue darker or just, like, something cool. to create more contrast between the type and mm -hmm. the text. Yeah. And then also for the headlines, I, I love how you're playing with different layers, mm -hmm. but I would try to have one of them be more legible. Okay, yeah. Um, just so you know like what it's about. Yeah, definitely. And I'm thinking this might be a spread, like a two page, because mm -hmm. this yeah. jacket goes over oh, to yeah. here. Nice, good use of the layering, power clashing, as I like yeah. to say. <laughs> Pandeli says, my eyes hurt. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of information to look at. Those 90s colors, they'll get ya. So nice job, I love your jacket zine. All right, this one is titled Alice. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday, Walkman. <laughs> oh, whoa. How old is it, how many years? Seven? Can't touch this thing. <laughs> Cool, this is like yeah. an exploration of, of type as shapes. Yeah. I like the big numbers. Mm -hmm. They're abstract, but you can still kind of read them, which mm -hmm. is nice. Yeah, yeah. very zine-esque. You're yeah. searching a little bit for the information you need. <laughs> cool, I like it's cool. this is yeah, my favorite this spread. Yeah, this one's nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great I job. I like the colors too. That's what I was gonna say, especially this one. Mm. Uh, Oatmeal-y, beige-y. Ooh, nice. Yeah, 90s party. <laughs> Cool. Call the crew. Wear your colors. Yeah. <laughs> this feels like a Teen Vogue. Oh, like, totally. How to throw your I like I party. like the colors a lot. Mm -hmm. Register that moment. <laughs> <laughs> Move the body. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like the the layering of the images yeah. and the shapes, mm -hmm. and colors. It's yeah, cool. and it kind of goes back to the cover. Where yeah. It has this. Yeah. It kind of follows through most of the spreads that there is like some color block um, behind mm -hmm. the images. Yeah, true. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah. And all the spreads I think have a nice difference, mm -hmm. difference in layout. Yeah, totally. But it still feels like very cohesive, like mm -hmm. from the same world, which is nice. Yeah. Nice job. 90s party. Mm -hmm. All right, this is a grungy <laughs> one. Sound of the 90s. Yeah. Ooh, it's edgy close up. Oh, yeah. Look at that necklace. Whoa, don't get too close. <laughs> Looks dangerous. Mm -hmm. Here's the last one. I think I really like these little mm. almost call outs yeah. here. It's interesting to break up the text a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what do you think about this gradient? I don't think I've seen that yet. I like gradients. I feel like it can it can feel very interesting. Also, in that way, it helps translate like from one image to the yeah. other because mm -hmm. like the left one is like more in this like beigey kind of more neutral world, mm -hmm. and then the right image, both images actually are way more blue. So Definitely, it's nice. Yeah, it's a nice just visual tool to kind of help yeah. your eye go over here for more information. Good job. Oh, right. Ooh. <laughs> Those great days. Yes. Throwback to the 90s. Oh, there's actual copy here. Mm -hmm. All right, stop. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I love that you actually took the time to put this real copy yeah. in here. I also love the shapes and that it's like 
rotations are all over the place, mm -hmm. kind of like different angles and also the color scheme that you're like sticking to CMYK, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super 90s. And even though it's going at different angles, since mm -hmm. the background has this nice pattern, it seems to kind of follow yeah. some sort of organization. At first listen. <laughs> oh, I thought this was like, all right, stop. Collaborate at first listen. Do, do, do. Mm -hmm. I think I'm taking it too far though. <laughs> okay, on to the next. Get out. Ooh, mm. I like the patterns. Yeah, me too. Simple. Yeah. Ooh, Ooh that type's nice. Mm-hmm. Definitely mix and match. Yeah. I see what you're doing there. Even these little scribbles mm -hmm. here. This feels very like mood board esque. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I like the type on path. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This feels very zine to me. Yeah, it feels very fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. Even the interesting cropping of these two images. Like mm -hmm. This one, this one, yeah. diagonal. I like the overlapping of text, image, illustration, squiggles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a nice word, a squiggles. <laughs> like it. Cool, great job. Ooh, art and design. Ooh, nice. Those colors are cool. Very nice. Type is interesting too. I like the headline font. Mm hmm. Yeah, mixed with this. Mm hmm. Really, really. A lot of white space, which is a nice place to let your eye rest yeah. after this crazy pattern. <laughs> cool. Oh, that's nice. Oh, there's the same little oh, yeah. illustration. Cool. It's <laughs> nice. Nice job. Yeah. Crunk. <laughs> Hella cool. <laughs> From California, probably. Yeah. Oh, this is cool. Mm hmm. And say, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Come and Klein, it's written all over your underwear. <laughs> I also love how the type, like, through adding that back layer, mm -hmm. it just creates, like, that loudness yeah. to it. Like, as if every everything was shaking because mm -hmm. she's, like, screaming. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's almost like if it were a digital publication, mm -hmm. that would actually be animated yeah. to shake a little yeah. bit. Awesome. And I'm going to switch to full screen real quick so I can make sure that we got all of them. Oh, also, I was going to show Massimiliano's first submission because we didn't look at all of the spreads the first time. So this is from the first stream with mm -hmm. Rachel and Javier, and I think it's like a, a true story about maybe Massimiliano's past. Let me know, Massimiliano, if you're still here. About Berlin. Oh, nice. Lots of strong photo yeah. layouts. Nice. Mm -hmm. I like the play with all the shapes and all the sharp shapes too. Yep. It's interesting. It's kind of brutalist looking. Mm. Very cool. Oh, still here? Maybe? Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see him in chat. But cool, I just wanted to show that. Um, and let's look through these again, mm -hmm. and you can let me know which ones really stand out to you. Yeah, I'll just maybe select like four or five, mm -hmm. and then maybe the audience can help uh, vote. Cool, sounds good. The winner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you have this one. Mm -hmm. choo -choo. Thanks, do you have a card? Funny. Oh, this one's nice, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a cover. Yeah. Do you want that to be one of yeah, your? Yeah, okay. let's pick that one. Take it to the top. Yay. Got this one. Mm -hmm. Find his party. Teen Vogue edition. Mm -hmm. I kind of like that because it um, it feels very feels very cohesive all over with yeah. the text, but still the layout is very diverse. Mm -hmm. Um, and I like that it always followed that uh, theme with having some color behind the yeah. images, too. It's nice. Good job. All right. Okay. This one with the gradients. Stab Massimiliano. Oh, that's fun. Mm -hmm. I like that one. I like the angles and the colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very nice. Got this one, the mix and match. 
the screaming girl. Yeah. Oh wait, no, not with the screaming mm-hmm. girl, no. but with this. I think that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Just having um, all the different types of type and image and layout, um, color, and uh, illustrations and everything overlap yeah. is cool. Lots of great visual yeah. texture. And the color scheme kind of stays the same mm-hmm. throughout, which makes it tie together. Right, but it doesn't get boring. Yeah, it's not like the same exactly. thing over and over again. Cool. This one. Mm-hmm. Nice colors. Yeah, it's nice too. Crunk. Oh, that's the screaming one. Mm-hmm. I don't have the screaming one. You like the screamy one. <laughs> yeah, I love that one. Makes us feel a certain kind of way. Yeah. <laughs> and we've got Berlin. Yeah. Super cool. I like that one because it feels very strong, but I feel like it doesn't feel 90s. Mm, that's true. Um, the type feels like way more um, art deco in a way. Mm-hmm. And yeah, colors feel kind of like Bauhaus-y with the with the images that are like so strong and like black and white yeah so. yeah that's true maybe it's yeah. more speaking about like what berlin was like in 92 yeah, maybe uh, which is cool in yeah. and of itself but i think these are our top options mm. we've got mix and match hella cool screaming girl grunk <laughs> got this all right stop talk about music we got the teen vogue and we've got the 90s jackets oh, yeah. All right, chat. Any favorites? We got 90s jackets, Teen Vogue, 90s party edition, song reviews, crunk, and a mix and match. And we can keep talking about these while chat kind of gives their feedback. We'd love for your help because this is a tough position for Stephanie to be in. (laughs) I like them all. (laughs) I'm always struck by this cover. Yeah. With these kind of almost macaroni and cheese I love noodle-y. that everyone was just using like crazy patterns. Mm-hmm. I just love that. Because you, I feel like you don't get to do that that much anymore right. nowadays. Yeah. It was like make yeah. it as accosting to the eyes yeah, as like you as possibly can. Yeah, as loud as possible. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we have GF likes the, gr- the Teen Vogue one, Fortune and Alexandra like the songs, and now likes mix and match. Screaming girls. Crunk, (laughs) mix and match. Screaming girls always win. If they're loud enough, they say, I win. And they win. (laughs) Song, crunk. Man, okay, so I think um, songs, crunk, and mix and match are the top options. Yeah. Okay. It's up to you, Stephanie. Oh my god, I don't know. Um, I like the mix and match, I think, a lot because it plays with so many different elements but Mm -hmm. still uh, feels very consistent. Yeah. I agree. Are you going to go with that? Yeah, I think so. Okay, congrats. (laughs) Mix and match. Yeah. I think this might be Yadira. That's the name I see. If you're in chat. Oh, yeah. Yadira, you're here. Awesome. Congratulations. You have won. (laughs) the challenge Woo-hoo! so we have featured all of your work on adobe live thank you everyone for submitting and like <laughs> we said we have another stream with lucas and michael coming up next if you didn't get your work in on time uh feel free to upload it and they'll look at it next yadira says omg <laughs> yes yeah, so you have yeah. won a free year of creative cloud uh be on the lookout in your behance messages because adobe live will message you and get that all sorted out with you Oh, everyone says supported. Don Marie oh, so says, nice. way to go. <laughs> yeah, let's look at that again. Yeah. I think out of the three spreads, I think the cover is maybe the weakest, in my mm. opinion. And I'm not sure why. I think it's, I, I think the layout itself is really interesting. Yeah. It might just be the image that feels I think so. a little off. Mm-hmm. Maybe because it, I don't know, it doesn't feel as happy as the rest. Mm-hmm. And maybe, I don't know, maybe you could play a bit with the temperature of the image to maybe warm it up a little bit. Um, maybe that could help. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. And I'm not sure if I think, I mean, this typeface is cool, but I maybe use another one for the cover. I don't know. <laughs> this just doesn't strike me. Yeah. But that's really subjective or feedback. Or maybe <laughs> repeat the, like, the one that has a pattern in there. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe that helps a little. Yeah, I agree, but congrats, Yadira. She says, yeah. I needed this. That's awesome. <laughs> Super glad. Um, looks like a Saved by the Bell background. It totally <laughs> does. I agree. So we have about five minutes left with Stephanie. 
Um, maybe we can go over what you did the first day, what you did the second mm. day, and what you're going to be doing tomorrow. Yeah. So let's mm -hmm. scroll back up. Um, and Yadira says, yeah, the cover was a last thought. So that <laughs> makes sense. Keep working yeah. on it, Yadira. It's awesome. Mm. So yesterday we started laying out the InDesign document with mm -hmm. grids and all that. And then we focused a lot on the cover. So bringing in illustration and creating a logo um, for the cover and having both interlock with each other. Right. Um, and then we continued with the first spread, which I kept in the same um, background color, just so that when, once I have it printed, the, Im the color of the background doesn't bleed onto the cover side, so the colors don't mix. Mm -hmm. um, and here I just use the same kind of technique where I have like big type and the illustrations are um, like interlocking and there's like front parts and back parts, mm -hmm. so it's like kind of hugging the type. That's a nice way to think about it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then moving on to the third, uh, second spread, which um, continues just the same quote and also has uh, illustrations, but I um, made the background blue. I felt like I had this very fresh color palette that I wanted to work with, mm -hmm. and so every spread is kind of having its own color. And what's the poet's name again? Um, Raina Maria Rilke. <laughs> it's like a tickle <laughs> when you say it. It's so nice. <laughs> Great, yeah. cool. I'm going to record it for you so you just have it. My text ringtone. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'll just do that over and over again. <laughs> um, and then today I um, created this um, spread where it's the story of the frog prince where the frog at the end transforms into a beautiful, handsome prince. Mm -hmm. And I felt like um, it would be interesting to juxtapose that um, through typography and having actually the whole story become more dense and dense and until it's like all black and kind of like you would maybe call it ugly. Mm. Like just like having it go different ways. Yeah. You know, From like story this. to layout. Yeah. She's doing this kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, then afterwards we started working on the fruit and vegetable section, which has these paper cutouts that I scanned in and some imagery from Adobe Stock. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> and um, I have like these vegetable and fruit jokes. Oh, this man. one was from, from the, the chat. chat. Mm -hmm. Which is, what did the father tomato say to the child whilst on a walk? Catch up. Catch up or else. <laughs> turn into... Mm, I don't, I don't know. Wanna, I don't want to go down that road. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I also keep like the um, answers to those questions um, upside down so you're not immediately able to read the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But it's close close enough to the question so you don't have to search for it yeah. forever. And we talked about how you'd actually have to turn around this big old printout yeah. of newsprint to find the answer. It's, it's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. So for tomorrow, I'm just going to continue with that same theme, but on that lilac page. Mm. Some more jokes. Yeah, some more jokes. Wow. And then the last two spreads I kept white for now because I was um, thinking of playing with the same kind of illustrations as um, in the first two spreads, mm -hmm. but instead of having it on a colored background, I was thinking of having it on a white background and just color the illustrations yeah. interestingly, and then I'll add some type on path elements. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. And that'll be done for tomorrow, which will be the last day. So sad. You'll be three out of three. You're going to be an Adobe Live master Yay. after this week. <laughs> so glad you yeah. came back after yesterday. Of course. Super You're fun. Yeah. <laughs> Super glad to have you here. And we have Lucas and Michael coming up next. Maybe we can show the schedule uh, one more time. So this week we're doing editorial design. And that is with um, Rachel and Javier in the morning, and then Stephanie and myself right around lunchtime. And then ending the day is Lucas and Michael all doing very different things. I was actually very interested in what Lucas was working on yesterday. <laughs> it was kind of a wild ride. Very cool. So make sure you stick around, chat, if you're interested in taking InDesign to its to its limits. 
I would say, with Lucas's <laughs> projects. <laughs> uh, so everyone stick around. Stephanie, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Yay, so make sure you come back tomorrow for more uh, fruit and vegetable jokes. Yeah. Stick around for the next stream. Keep working on your challenges, and you could also possibly win some stickers and tattoo. <laughs> and, and we'll be back in about five minutes. So stay tuned. Bye, everyone. See you tomorrow. <laughs>